Hello and welcome to yet another tutorial by Davies Media Design. My name is Michael Davies and in today's tutorial I'll be showing you how to convert a JPEG logo to a vector logo using Inkscape. But of course before I get into that I want to direct you guys over to my website at DaviesMediaDesign.com. As always I have tons of GIMP and Inkscape tutorials on here as well as GIMP and Inkscape help articles so definitely check that out. You can also support my channel and help me grow by becoming a patron on Patreon and get some awesome GIMP and Inkscape extras in return. And I'll include a link to this as well as all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. So for this tutorial, I'll be using a built-in feature found in Inkscape called Trace Bitmap. And this is a very simple yet effective way of tracing your bitmap images, which is basically just a fancy name for your standard image that you would edit in something like GIMP or Photoshop. And so what we're gonna be doing is converting that bitmap image into a vector drawing using this tool. For starters, of course, I need to bring in my JPEG image into Inkscape and if you your Inkscape composition looks different than mine when you create a new one. That's because I set up my Inkscape canvas to look like Adobe Illustrator's artboard. I do have an article on how to do that and I will link that in the description of the video if you want to check it out. But I'll open up my folder that contains my JPEG logo. In this case, it's this Compost Denver logo. And I'll just drag and drop it onto my Inkscape canvas. When I do that, I'll get a dialog box that pops up that says JPEG bitmap image import. And I have two options here. I can either embed this image or I can link it. When you embed an image, it's just going to basically bring that image inside your composition. When you link it, it's going to keep the image outside the composition in its original location. So if you make any changes to it at a later time, it'll automatically update. In this case, we don't need to link this. So I'm just gonna keep the option set to embed. Image DPI or dots per inch is basically deciding what the resolution is gonna be. In this case, I'm just gonna keep it imported from the file. And then under image rendering mode, I'll choose none because I don't want this to be rendered in any other way. And I'll click okay. That will bring in my JPEG logo here. So I'll just click and drag this using the selection tool. I can also align this more accurately to my canvas by coming over here to the alignment tool and make sure relative to is set to page and I'll just use the vertical and horizontal center alignment options here. All right, once our image is centered on the canvas, there are three options for accessing this tool. And the first one is in the paths menu, so I can click path, trace bitmap. And the second option is using the shortcut key, which is listed here, shift alt B. The third option is to right click on the image and go to trace bitmap. Either way, all three options will bring you to this dialog box, which is the trace bitmap dialog. And you have several options here. You have single scan, which is one section, and you have three different options in here, or you have multiple scans and you have three other options in here. So in this case, I have a full color image and I wanna make sure that all of the original colors are kept when I convert this over to a vector drawing. And so I'm gonna go with the multiple scans creates a group of paths option here. And what this option is basically saying is that we're gonna be scanning this multiple times and each time we scan, we're gonna create a path. So in this case, if I scan it more than once, it says here 11. So when I'm scanning it 11 times, it's gonna create 11 different paths, stack them all on top of one another to create a composite vector drawing. And all of those stacked up paths are gonna be grouped together. So the final result is going to be a group of multiple paths. Hopefully that doesn't confuse you guys. I'm gonna demonstrate that a little bit later here. But I also have the remove background option checked. If I uncheck that and we turn the scans down a little bit, You'll see what happens as we start with lower numbers of scans. So we can only go with two as the minimal number. And as I increase the number of scans, you'll see more and more colors will start to appear inside of our preview. And by the way, if you don't have the preview option here, make sure your live preview is checked. So as I continue to raise the number of scans, you'll see more and more colors are added in here until this starts to look like our main logo. And then when I click the remove background option, that's just gonna make sure that this white background here behind our JPEG logo will get erased. So we do wanna make sure that's checked. I also have the smooth option unchecked. The smooth option tries to smooth any jagged edges or corners that appear from this vectorization process or this tracing process. And in my opinion, I think it overdoes it a little bit. So I like to keep this option unchecked. I don't think that the benefits outweigh the mistakes or the uh, detractors that come with using the smooth feature. So I'm gonna keep that unchecked. Once I'm ready though, I can just click the okay button and that is going to perform the bitmap trace there so I can exit out of this. 
And here we have our final vector logo. If I move this out of the way using my select tool, you'll see this is the original JPEG. If I hold control and use my mouse wheel to zoom in, you'll see the edges of this are pixelated still. So this was the JPEG image. I'll delete that and move this one back here towards the center. If I hold control and zoom in, you can see it's a little bit different. There are many colors going on in here because we did have a gradient and uh, it's hard to vectorize a gradient. But you can see the logo overall looks pretty good. And if I come over here to the Edit Paths by Nodes tool and hover my mouse over, you can see all the various paths that were created by this image trace. And if I click somewhere inside this logo, you can see all the nodes that were created here. So each one of these nodes is on a path and there are multiple paths inside of here. Remember, it's multiple paths all grouped together. And on that note, let me grab my selection tool here. So this is going to, and let me click off of this. If I click on my logo, this is going to select the entire group. But if I hit Control Shift G, which is the ungroup option, that will ungroup all of my paths that have been sliced and stacked on top of each other and grouped together. And now I can move these away from each other and you guys can see how this works. So you can see each little element of my logo, pretty much each color has its own little slice or path. So here's all the paths that were created. And I'll hit Control Z to back up. So this will bring them all together. And that's what creates the final composite vector drawing here. Let me just make sure I select everything using my selection tool and then go to Control G and that will group everything back together. And then I'll align this back to the center of the page. Some of you might be asking, what is the purpose of a tool like this? Well, in graphic design, it's common to need vector images for things like printing, or maybe you know you have a logo from a client and you need to put it on a billboard, so it needs to be much larger, but the client only has a JPEG, and if you scale a JPEG way up, it's gonna look super pixelated. This allows you to scale your compositions up or down. It also allows you to select certain parts of the composition now and recolor them, whereas in a JPEG image, you cannot do that and you can add or remove elements from the original logo and do it a lot more convincingly than trying to do it with a JPEG. So for example, if I want to scale this down, I can just click on the logo and drag in using the transform handles and holding the control key. So if I drag it way down like this and then I hold control and zoom in, you'll see the quality pretty much remains the same here. So it's the same exact quality as the larger image. And I'll hold control and zoom out. And if I do the opposite, so if I scale this way up, let me just hit Control Z and back up. So if I scale this way up, holding the Control key, you'll see the quality still remains the same here as well. Let me just back up by hitting Control Z. So you'll notice that the lettering also got deleted from this when we vectorized it. If I wanted to return the white color back to the lettering, all I have to do is grab my rectangle tool here, draw a rectangle, and in this case, let me actually just get rid of the rounded corners here. Make sure the color of the rectangle is white and then hit the page down key to bring that below our group of paths. And then I can use my select tool, hold the shift key, click on both the rectangle, which is already selected and the logo here, and then go to control G to group them together. And now if I move this outside the composition, you can see the white has returned to our lettering. So I'll hit Control Z. Now I can export this as a PNG without a background. So to do this, I'll go to File, Export PNG Image, change my export area to the page to make sure the entire page is saved. You can also go to Drawing if you only want the logo portion of this composition exported. Then I'll come over here to the Export As option. And I've done this once before, so I could just save over it or I could change this to whatever I want. Hit the Save button. And now come over here and hit Export. And it's going to ask me if I want to replace it. I'll just hit replace. And now our JPEG image has been exported as a PNG without a background. I can also export this as a .svg file. SVG, of course, stands for Scalable Vector Graphics. To do that, I'll just hit Control S on my keyboard if I've saved this before. Otherwise, go to File, Save As, or File Save, and rename this to whatever you want. It'll automatically add .svg to the end. Click Save. I'll hit Replace in my case, and there we go. All right, so that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you liked it. If you did, you could subscribe to my YouTube channel at youtube.com slash daviesmediadesign. You can visit my website at daviesmediadesign.com and you can support my channel and help me grow by becoming a patron on Patreon. And I'll include a link to that as well as all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. So thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.